In the next minute, I'm going to show you a super cool technique to supercharge your images with color. The technique we're going to apply today works in lab color space, so make sure you convert your document to lab by using the document, convert format menu and selecting lab 16. The idea is to create a copy of the image and then copy the A component to the B component and blend this with the original. Let's now duplicate the image and then rasterize it to a pixel layer. This will allow us to make changes in the channels. Make sure the pixel layer is selected and then in the channels panel right click on the composite A and select create spare channel. By the way, if the channels panel is not visible, you can enable it from the view studio menu. Right click on the spare channel and select load to pixel B component. This will overwrite the B component with the A component. Later on the video, I will share a faster technique to achieve the same effect. The end result is a very soft light image, which is perfect to apply in multiply blend mode. Awesome! If you feel the effect is too much, you can adjust the blend range of it. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in some additional tips and tricks, keep watching. You can now convert the image back to RGB if needed. As the 8-bit RGB has a smaller color range, you will lose some vibrance. This can be fixed by either modifying the blend range or by adding an HSL adjustment to the duplicate and increase the saturation and the lightness. Let's take a closer look. Pretty amazing. This method works quite well in most images. Here is an example where I have applied the same steps. I think when the effect is applied, you get pretty nice results. Sometimes you need to tweak the effect a bit, like in this example. The end result is quite dark and modifying the blend range does not really help. So we can add an HSL adjustment and modify the lightness and the saturation to get a better blend. The image still looks a bit too dark, but if we add a levels adjustment, we can see that the brighter areas are almost empty. So if we move the white level to the end of the curve, we get a pretty good looking image. A quick look at the before and the after. I notice that the greens on the hills are a bit too much. An easy solution would be to use a selective color adjustment. In the greens color, we can lower the cyans and increase the yellows to get a more natural looking image. If we look where we came from, I definitely think the end result is much more appealing. I promised you to show a quicker way of replacing the B component with the A component. In this image, I have applied the process already to the duplicate and notice that the image is still in lab mode. When I enable the pixel layer, it makes the image definitely more appealing. When we zoom into the face, Notice how the skin color and the hair get a richer look. So, instead of using the channels panel to assign the A component values to the B component, we can use a live procedural filter. In my setup, filters are applied as child layers. So, before making changes, let me move it out of the current layer and make it the top layer. Because we are working in lab mode, the channels available in the procedural filter will be the lab channels. I can add an entry, select the LB for B component and fill in as value LA, basically saying the A components will now also apply to the B component. Pretty easy. Now to change the blend mode of the layer to multiply and set the blend range. If we switch between the pixel layer created from the channels panel and this new procedural filter the results are exactly the same. There is a small catch though. When you convert the image back to RGB, the procedural layer will not work. Notice the difference between the pixel layer and the procedural layer. The end result is not the same. Reason for this is because the procedural layer was created in lab mode, it contains the lab channel calculations. As the document is an RGB, it can't do its job. 
Let me undo a couple of steps just before we converted the lab mode to RGB. The idea is now to convert the output of the filter to a pixel layer before doing the conversion. An easy way to achieve this is using the merge visible function. Before doing that, let me set the blend mode back to normal and reset the blend range so that we can get a clean output of the filter. I can now do a merge visible. As I have a pixel copy now, I can convert the document to RGB. We can now apply this pixel layer in multiply blend mode and adjust the blend range. Before I leave you, here is another adjustment which works well with this method. In this example, I have applied the method, but when we compare it with the original, it is a little bit of oversaturated. A quick way to fix that is to add a vibrance adjustment and tweak it. For example, lowering the saturation and increasing the vibrance usually works well. Thank you for watching and I hope you like this method. I will be posting a follow up on this method which can make your colors even pop more. Have a great day and until the next video.